The next watercolor painting we will be doing is painting a an iceberg for our polar bear. So you have a polar bear to cut out in the direction sheet and so you can cut out the polar bear and put her on the iceberg after you paint it. Um, so once again we have uh, tape around the cardstock on a craft tray. You can take the pipette, fill it up with water and just drizzle water around on the the paper. You want this one to be very to have a lot of water on it to be very wet. Now don't you don't have to completely cover but kind of swirl it around with your paintbrush and add some blue. And as you can see right away the water carries the blue and spreads it around and it looks really cool. That already looks really cool just like that. You, you can do a lot of experimentation with watercolor. Maybe adding a, a little bit of purple. Dot it on and then dip your brush in water and spread it around. Uh, use that to spread it around. You can take the, the plastic wrap, crumple it up a little bit and use that um, to that will create some of the lines that look like um, first adding some salt it's probably better to use a salt shaker but I didn't have one so I'm just using my hand and put the plastic crumple the plastic wrap up and then kind of put it on there and you want it to be crinkly you don't want it to be completely flat so the areas uh, that will move the paint around too while the paint is wet. So once you get it situated how you want it to be, you can take a look at it. You want to make let this completely dry before you take it off, and that will create a texture that that actually does look like ice. As you can see, the paint kind of gets pulled up in some of the creases. And it, it looks kind of like, it looks a little bit like ice right now, actually. And you let that dry completely before taking it off. And that's the way that you'll have that, those effects of those lines in there. That's from the, the plastic wrap. So once your iceberg painting is completely dry, you can Carefully uh, just remove the, the plastic wrap from it and then this is very light but you you can kind of see the designs on it where it, it actually kind of does look like an iceberg and at this point uh, we've taken the tape off um, go ahead and cut out the, your polar bear that came in your directions kind of a print uh, a polar bear uh, picture and we're gonna you can use a glue stick or actually what I like to do is just take um, some masking tape and then curl up a, a little piece of it and put it on um, like a little tube of masking tape and put that uh, on the back of the bear and then the bear can go anywhere you like it to go. Oh, one thing is you can all there's since there's salt in here some of the salt is dry you might want to brush off some of the salt and then find a home for your oops find your a home for your polar bear to go he'll now she is going to show up more on a darker area and just go ahead and just uh, press press her on somewhere or may, maybe here is a good place and the thing about the tape is you can move the polar bear around. Like maybe she wants to go down there. You, you can move it around. So um, there you have your polar bear, your iceberg and polar bear painting. So for the next two paintings, the city painting and the planets, you want to use the watercolor paper, which is thicker. It has some little bumps on it you'll be able to see. Um, and it's thicker than the cardstock. So uh, the reason for this is because you're going to actually be using a lot of water, even more than the other ones. So this paper is strong. So here we have um, the watercolor paper with tape all around it. And I put tape on it 
and some of the tape is flat on top some of the tape has a kind of points like and those are going to be the roofs the tape is the buildings and the points of the roofs they're different sizes this is masking tape and I've pressed it on but not too hard uh, now drizzling water with the pipette and you, this is all about wash watercolor washes so we're gonna make a dark sky and the tape will keep the paint from going in that area and that will be a white building against a dark sky and a sunset coming in already with some dark purple that looks yeah and blue and mixing that in you can see the water that we laid down with the pipette is already grabbing the paint and moving it around that already looks really cool now in here I'm um, working on a sunset and we're gonna try not to touch the sunset colors to the blue because those will immediately mix together so just laying out a sunset that went in the lower part of the sky the dark red the orange um, grab some yellow, mix yellow in, kind of a yellow-orange. So if you've seen a sunset where it's later, um, it it go it ends up very low in the sky, and and the um, the sunset actually looks like it has colors of the rainbow, maybe red, uh, mainly kind of orange, with some red and yellow. But you'll also be able to see green in there too. It's kind of like the colors of the rainbow spread out across the whole sky, across the horizon. Mix in some yellow. At this point, we can start to blend in these colors. And we can let the green blend in with the blue. We don't want the blue so much to mix with the orange or red. At that point, that'll turn into kind of a brown color. Now you can see that I've painted over the buildings and that's okay. The paint just kind of doesn't absorb into the, to the tape and the tape will keep it from going on the paper. Eventually we'll take the tape off but only once the whole painting is dry. So blending some of that sky in. We're going to put even more paint to make it darker. We want it to be very dark. Adding um, a lot of kind of the purple at the top, mixing the purple and the blue to make it an intense color. A very intense color. So that's looking pretty good. Time to add a sprinkle of salt over the top that'll make it some cool effects maybe even look some like some stars in the sky Painting a little dark here in between the buildings. Maybe this is the street that can you can see between the buildings. But I'm keeping this from touching the red. I don't want it to touch the red. I'll leave a little bit of white in between. And that will stop it from touching and from mixing with each other. The colors from mixing. So you'll have red, a little white line, and then purple at the bottom. Maybe that's the street. Be sure to completely let this dry before taking off the tape. So once you get the tape off, you can see that these are going to be the buildings. Find a, like kind of a ballpoint black pen, and then you can go in and begin drawing some details on these buildings, like maybe some windows and other kinds of details. So I'm going to draw windows on this building. I'll fill all these in. 
Maybe this building will have uh, some rounded windows. Windows come in different shapes. This one might be rounded. And maybe this one has a roof on it. Maybe it has some kind of detail like this. So go ahead and fill your all your buildings up with some details of windows and roofs, maybe doors. Okay, done filling in the windows and the doors and the roofs, the details on these buildings. And this, the um, city skyline at sunset, this one is done. Next up is a really cool space scene of planets in space. You definitely want to use the watercolor paper for this, the thicker one. And um, if you can, tape it down on something like a craft tray because you will use a lot of water with this. So let's go ahead and get started by drawing some circles on the paper. Uh, here's just a cardboard um, toilet paper tube, using that for um, to draw circles with on the paper for the planets. Drawing kind of light. Uh, maybe use a cup. Maybe use something to have different sizes of circles. So a different, uh, like a cup or something, so you can have some different sizes. Add some more circles. Okay, we have six of them, it looks like. Now, uh, use your pipette and put a little bit of, put a water in the middle of each one, of each circle that's going to be a planet. Use that to put water in each one. Whoops. You can always use a paper towel to take up water or extra paint if you don't, if you, if it went somewhere where you don't want it to go because it went outside side of the circle here. Now use your paintbrush to move the water around in each circle. You don't have to paint all the way to the edge. Actually, don't paint all the way to the edge. Just put move it around kind of in towards the center, but spread it out a little tiny bit. Start with a, starting with a little bit of yellow. Now you want to keep these planets kind of light for the reason that the background is going to be dark. So start by putting a dot in the middle and then spreading the paint around a little bit into the water you have. Try to use lighter colors. And just a little bit of paint will go a long way for this one. Here's a little blue. Oh, that looks pretty already. Looks kind of like a marble. Keeping the colors light. Nice. Now maybe taking just just water on the brush, spreading the May, drawing the circle up to the line. You don't have to go all the way up to the line, but kind of spread out the the water a little bit more. And you want the area that's closest to the pencil line to be the lightest. So you want this to stay very light. And it's even okay to keep some um, some white in there. It doesn't have to be colored all the way to the circle. 
as you can see, there's white around the edge, and that helps the planets to stand out from the very dark background, is having the white around the edge and the light. So you want it to be lightest towards the edge and then darker towards the center of the planet. And that will that is what is going to make it look round, is having it darker in the middle and lighter towards the edge. So maybe putting in green and mixing that in to make kind of an aqua. When outside the edge, go ahead and use paper towel to wipe it up a little bit and then spread. So here we have a dark in the center and trying to spread, move the painting around a little bit and um, spread it out a little bit. If it ever gets too dark, you can always take it up a little bit with a paper towel while it's wet. It's pretty, um, you can make changes to it pretty easily. There, that looks good. That looks kind of like a marble, it look, and it looks kind of like the, a planet, even maybe like the Earth in space. Adding a little bit of green to that yellow. It's hard to see in this, but it's green, and when it mixed with yellow, it will make kind of a lime green, a really light green. Red and blue, kind of like Spider-Man colors for that smaller planet. Now be sure to watch the next video, which is the last video in this playlist, to find out how to make the background of your space scene. See you in the next video!